I'll be reading Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 17. And when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a cord with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounting on an ass, <clears throat> excuse me, and on a colt, the fall of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments in them and they set thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, singing, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus came to the temple of God and drove up all who sold and brought, bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changes and the seat of those who sold pe pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what this is saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you ever heard, never heard, read, never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, that has brought perfect praise. And leaving them, it went out of the city of Bethany and lodged there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Imagine Jesus as your Lord and King. Riding mm -hmm. triumphantly into your home this day. Yes. Hey, yes, Imagine you today spreading a red carpet for Hallelujah. him as a royal. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Actually riding into your heart and taking yes. absolute yes. possession of every yes. space in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul. Hallelujah. That is his full position. Hallelujah. 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 As we come into his presence, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We all know, or rather, I should not assume, today is celebrated as Palm Sunday, and it is in remembrance of that wonderful day when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. And you may wonder, you may wonder, you may wonder why was there such a stir about it? The fact is that on this particular day, the Jews in those days were getting ready to celebrate Passover. Remember God had instituted it that every year they must celebrate Passover, which was the, the remembrance of them coming out of Egypt. And on this particular day, as usual, they were going to celebrate. And if, you know, it's like Christmas time when all of us are trying to return home to, to be together to celebrate. So at that time, again, a lot of Jews from all over, wherever they were, would come together to celebrate Passover. So a lot of them were in Jerusalem at that time. And Jesus then prepared. He knew what was ahead. Amen. And he made preparation as we have heard in the reading today in Matthew chapter 21. He sent out his disciples to go and get the colt 
I'm not going to go into those details. We want to concentrate on something else this morning. Why did Jesus have to come in triumphantly? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus have to come as a king? The reason is that up till that time, there had been, before that time rather, there had been a prophetic utterance. Yes, there had been a prophetic utterance so many years before that the king, the king would come in Zechariah 9, chapter 9, which is also quoted in Matthew 21. It says, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on an ass and on a colt, the fall of an ass. It had been foretold that the king would come and the sign was that he would come on an ass. And so it is no wonder that Jesus asked the disciples to go and get the ass. But you know what makes it even more special is that before that time, throughout Jesus's ministry, he started his ministry at the age of 30. And for three and a half years thereabouts, you will notice if you study the Bible, you will notice at different times when people wanted to reveal Jesus as king, he would not permit them. When he performed the first, when he, they were in Cana of Galilee and the mother was telling him to do something about the situation on ground, he said to the mother, mother, just be still, my time has not come. And there were times after that when he performed different miracles, he would actually tell the people, don't tell anyone. So Jesus knew he was bidding his time because he knew when the appropriate time comes, he would be revealed in that way. And that is what makes this particular day important because at last, Jesus now revealed himself in his royalty as king, hallelujah, amongst the people that he had been for, uh, uh, for so many years. And that is the reason why we ourselves ought to take an example from that, that it is time that Christ Jesus is revealed in us as the king of our lives. As a matter of fact, it should not just be for one day. It should be all the time. But a day like this brings that to our remembrance that this Christ Jesus that we say is our Lord and our Savior, we must always raise him as king in our hearts at all times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so on that day, Jesus came in. And when he came in, Riding on that ass, the Jews at the time, they were so excited. The Bible tells us that there was a stir in the city on that day. They began to hail him. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Why did they say Hosanna? What is the meaning of Hosanna? We're told that that word Hosanna actually means save us in the Hebrew language. It means save us. And when you go into the book of Psalms 118 in verse 25, it says there, save us, we beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech thee, give us success. So in Hebrew, that word Hosanna actually means, Lord, please, Lord, save us. Yes? And so on that day, the Jews were hailing Jesus as that Messiah, as that king who would come to save them. Save them from what, however? You see, at that time, they were looking for salvation from the domination of Rome. They wanted to be delivered from the Roman rule. And so in their minds, this king that has come, let's hail him because he's going to save us from Roman rule. And that's one of the reasons why, as you read in another version of, of the gospel, of this, uh, in the gospels of this particular day, you read there that Jesus had to actually 
rebuke them because he saw beyond all their noise. He knew that they, they got it wrong, actually. He was not actually coming there to save them from Roman dominion. Rather, he was being revealed as the king who would save their souls. Hallelujah. And of course, in, in, in the following verse of that Psalm 118, in verse 26, it then goes on to say the exact words that they said that day. Blessed be he who enters in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the Hosanna, asking God to save them, asking him, save us. And then blessed is he who enters in the name of the Lord, appreciating him that this is one who will do it. Up till that time, they had seen Jesus perform so many miracles. They had seen him. And again, it was shortly after he actually raised Lazarus from the dead. So his, the, the word had gone round about this man who has done so much. And this day, as he now rode him, he was not just walking in their midst. He actually rode him. They began to acknowledge him. The Bible says in John chapter 12, verse 13, so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They took palm fronts. In Israel, they have a lot of palm, front, palm trees. You go down their streets, you find a lot of olive palm trees. And so they took those branches off the tree and they laid it on the ground. Why would they lay it on the ground? Why did they leave, remove, as we read in the book of Matthew, that they actually took their garments, they spread their garments on the colt for him to sit. You see, they were honoring Jesus. They honored Jesus. They made him comfortable on that colt. They laid even those palm, uh, uh, palm fronds on the ground to even make it comfortable for the donkey to move. Because again, the ground was stony. For those of us who, are, who may have been to Israel, you see that it's a, can be, some areas can be very stony and uneven. So imagine in those days, how it would be. They laid those palm fronds there to do what? For him to be comfortable, for the donkey to walk smoothly, that Jesus himself would be smooth. Just like you would lay a red carpet for uh, 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 any member of royalty or anybody you, you count important. So they were doing all these things to honor Jesus on that day. Hallelujah. And so today when we relate this day to ourselves, as I said earlier on, it is a day to remind ourselves that Christ Jesus must always have that position of king in our lives that position of king in our, in our hearts, in our souls, in any area of our life. He must take the position of, 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 uh, of a king. And the way Jesus came in on that day, he took the whole city by surprise. He didn't tell them he was coming. He took them by surprise. But still, they, cut, you know, they, 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 they caught on to it. A day like this reminds us that we must be prepared. We must be prepared for the coming of the Lord. It had been prophesied to them so many years before through Zechariah. And suddenly that day in their midst, it happened. Hallelujah. Are we prepared? Are we prepared to have Jesus? Supposing the Lord decides to visit us in our lives, in our homes, in whatever area of our lives. Supposing he decides to visit us there was a day when God decided, I need to go and visit Abraham. Abraham was not expecting it. And, but the Lord who sent his angels to, to Sodom, he decided, I need to go to his house. And when he came through the angels, what happened? Abraham received him well. And he spoke to him. They had a good dialogue, which eventually ended up in him telling him, I'm going to fulfill my promise to you. Hallelujah. If the Lord should come to you today, are you able to receive him? Are you able to welcome him in as your king, as your Lord? 
a day like this reminds us that we must be ready. We must be ready to receive him. A day like this reminds us and teaches us that we must honor him at all times. In those days, they honored him. They gave their garments. They spread it. They made it comfortable. Sit down. Be comfortable. Hallelujah. They pampered him. Can you do the same? Can you do the same? Imagine the day that Jesus went to the house of Zacchaeus. He was over the moon. He was so happy. It changed his life. He set food before him. If Jesus were to visit us, would we honor him? Would we pamper him as our king? Hallelujah. Remember what I said. For the Jews, they were receiving him because they thought he would deliver them from human domination. But the real thing is Jesus has come not just to save us from human domination. He has actually come to save our souls from the captivity of the devil. Remember, the Bible tells us we are not contending against flesh and blood. To be delivered from human beings is a small matter. But from the, from, for your soul and your spirit, your life to be delivered from Satan, so many years ago, it took the spilling of his blood. And this day, Palm Sunday, marked the beginning of that journey for Jesus to pay that price for the release of our souls from dominion of the devil. Hallelujah. That is why it is called the Holy Week. From today, Palm Sunday, right through to Easter Sunday, is known as the Holy Week because it is so crucial in the Christian story. This is the day that Jesus began that journey. He began that journey that will culminate in his, uh, uh, his suffering, his death on the cross, and then his resurrection. The whole package of salvation story began on that day when he rode into Jerusalem. So it's all about the salvation of our souls. Him coming in is to take his position that he will be Lord over us. Sadly on that day, for many who called and hailed him as king, crying Hosanna, a few days after, they were the same people who cried, crucify him. Because from the very beginning, they got it wrong. We must not get it wrong. It's my prayer that we who hail him today as our Lord and King will not tomorrow denounce him in the name of Jesus. By his grace, he has brought us to know him. Let us remember this day. Let us remember how it is his desire how it is the desire of his father that he be revealed as Lord and King in our lives all the time. Hallelujah. That day, so many years ago, was the beginning of a new era, a new phase. Hallelujah. As I said, it was the beginning of his passion, the beginning of his suffering. So when people talk about the passion of Christ, they're talking about his suffering the suffering he was ready to go through to endure for the sake of those whom he loved, he loves. And so this day also must remind us that he paid such a big price. He paid that price for us. And it all began on this day. Hallelujah. Let us receive him as our king. Let us always raise him. Let us always raise him as Lord and King over our lives. In every situation, he must be hailed as King. Hallelujah. In all circumstances, even by others, Christ must be hailed in our lives as Lord and King. Hallelujah. And nothing must stop it. On that day, as children, even children, they were exalting Jesus as Lord. The Pharisees were indignant. They were saying, why should they be saying that? Why should they be doing this? And Jesus said to them, you know what? 
Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast brought perfection. Uh, so thou hast brought perfect praise. Out of what? The mouths of babes and sucklings. Perfect praise will be brought to Christ Jesus in our lives. When Christ is honored, when he's exalted, perfect praise must be given to him. Hallelujah. And he told them, even if you tell these ones to keep quiet, he said the very stones will do what? They will cry out and still praise me. That is nothing, nothing must stop Christ being exalted in our lives. Nothing must stop Christ being praised in our lives. Hallelujah. Absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing must stop Christ being exalted in us. He must forever be praised. Hallelujah. He must forever be praised because he deserves it. And on that day, even on that day, the Jews themselves, they had no choice but to concede. In Luke chapter 19, verse 40, it says, I tell you, it, it reads, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Hallelujah. John 12, 13. Hallelujah. You see that you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Hallelujah. That is how it should be. Nothing must stop God's glory in our lives. Nothing must stop Christ's glory in us. People must be drawn just like on that day. Even the Jews, the enemies of Jesus, they had to concede. There's nothing you can do about this man. The world has gone after him. Hallelujah. It is my prayer that we will appreciate Christ Jesus in our lives. Amen? To the extent where every day, every day, just continue to exalt him as king over yourself. He paid it all. This week, we will be looking into the passion. Amen? His suffering, his death on the cross, his resurrection. But for today, let's hail him as our king. Let's hail him as the Lord of our lives. Let's hail him as that true Messiah, that true savior of our souls. Those in those days, they made a mistake. Till tomorrow, a lot of Jews still don't believe that the Messiah has come. But for us, by his grace, we have come to know him. So it's only left for us to do what? To keep him in that position in our lives. Keep him as the one who rules. He has taken you out of, out of the dominion of darkness and, been, he, and you, he has been brought, you have been brought into his kingdom. And that is how it must remain. Hallelujah. By his death on the cross, he has done that deliverance. If he has delivered your soul, then your life is delivered from the hands of men. If he has delivered you from Satan, then your life is delivered from every other thing that you imagine you are, is holding you captive. Hail him as king. Hail him as your Lord. Adore him. Honor him. Pamper him. Let, him. let him see that you appreciate who he is. In those days, they honored him, yes, because they had seen the miracles, the signs that he had performed. Do you take time to think about the things that God has done in your life, the things that Jesus has done? Do you not know it is the name of Jesus that works those things that you, you, you testify about? Exalt him. Give him that glory that forever he will remain that Lord and King in your life. And it's my prayer that we will understand the hour of our visitation Jesus said of the Jews in those days, he wept, he wept. He said, oh, Jerusalem, how I wish you understood the time, your hour of visitation, but it's hidden from your eyes. So while they were hailing him in Jesus's heart, there was still that pain that these people still don't understand what it is all about. And it is no wonder 
in due course, he went into the temple. And when he saw those who were buying and selling, he swept them all out. He whipped them out of the house. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer and not a den of robbers that you have made it into. It shows you that he took his position that I'm the one in control here. I'm the one in control of this temple. I am the king. And the same should be for you. Your body is his temple. Our hearts should be his temple. Amen. And whatever should not be in there, because he's king over us, he has every right to get rid of them, to eliminate them, to remove them in the name of Jesus. And so as we remember him today and we are praising him and we are hailing him, let us give him that absolute a, a permission and authority in humility and say, Lord Jesus, ride on. And everything you don't want in my heart, you don't want in my life, whip, sweep it out. Whip them out because you alone will take place, will take your rightful place in my heart. And you will reign there forever until you return to take me to the Father's kingdom. He's looking forward to seeing us in his Father's kingdom. Just like on that day, Palm Sunday, so many years ago, as he rode in there, you know, even God, his father, was counting down how many more days before my son returns in glory. Hallelujah. Even God was looking forward to the Lord Jesus returning to him in glory. And even Jesus himself was looking forward, even though he knew there was a big job ahead for him to do. He was looking forward. So it's also a time, a day to remember that we must be looking forward. We must be heaven bound, thinking about how we will return to the Father in glory. May the Lord help us all in the name of Jesus. It is my prayer that today, as we praise him, as we exalt him, I pray that his opinion about us will be right. As we praise him, I pray he will look at us and say, yes, indeed, I know I am your king. I know I am Lord over your lives. Hallelujah. It is my prayer today that as we praise him, tomorrow we will not denounce him. Our song must always be to hail him as king of our lives. And that position will remain always in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.